When looking at the condition of the racetrack, you know, we all know that a Kentucky Derby is not really ideally uh, a true derby in many ways, in ways, shapes, and forms because of that off track. It just wreaks havoc. I'm a little surprised after they, they sealed the racetrack that they didn't do a second seal um, and harrow this track out a little bit more because there was standing water on this on this surface uh, in this 145th Kentucky Derby. So I, I think it just really wasn't, uh, just like in the previous year with Justify and the year before that with Always Dreaming, these, these muddy, wet, you know, damp derbies um, are basically not indicative of what these horses can truly do. The only argument that, or the only counterpoint that goes against it um, being not such, you know, what I call a level playing field is the fact that the horses that do well, they had to compete on it too. So somebody, you just have to basically, you know, um, endure these things. Um, so that's one thing is the track condition. But, you know, in looking at the track condition, um, I think Improbable handled it reasonably well. Obviously, the top four or five horses ran as best they could on it. Uh, maximum Security certainly had no problem with it. But again, these front-running horses seem to have that ability um, to overcome these kind of wet conditions. And it's like, as one um, person said, it's like a conveyor belt. Uh, one thing about, you know, the irony of all this, you know, and what's so tragic is the fact that uh, John Service um, won this with Smarty Jones on a muddy racetrack where it rained in the, in, in the 15 to 30 minutes prior to the horses springing out of the gate and Jason uh, his brother wins this derby on a muddy racetrack with a front-running tactical horse undefeated um, wins this Kentucky Derby and what a poetic uh, poetically seamless situation uh, this would have been if this had resulted held up and it's really really sad that um, the brother of a derby winning trainer wins the derby with an undefeated horse on an off racetrack does it in really fantastic and in grand style and gets his number taken down in a situation in which granted it was at a somewhat of a crucial point in the race but I just don't think um, for though I'm going to be in the minority literally not only because of this but because of this uh, my decision making and I just don't agree with the decision even though I do think he did interfere with other horses and uh, obviously you know a horse that was unmolested and who actually affected one of the horses as I mentioned long range toddy uh, gets the win 
It's just one of those weird coincidences. Interestingly enough, this will make the Triple Crown really not necessarily a, a Triple Crown tragedy. It actually makes things uh, quite interesting whether Country House can win the Preakness and put himself in a position for the Triple Crown or not. Uh, it's made the news meter, uh, the news wires uh, sort of jump up, and, and uh, it's creating an interest, whether it be bad and indifferent, uh, to um, the thoroughbred industry. So in a way, in a strange way, it actually makes the Triple Crown very, very interesting. There'll be a lot of eyes on Country House, obviously might, maybe not as many ratings-wise because maximum security is not going to be in there, but yet still the Derby winner's in there. Um, and as Bill Mott joked, you kind of get guilted into it. But, um, you know, that's the, the hand. If you want to win the Kentucky Derby, you know you got to go to the Preakness. So there's no sense in even trying to begin to cry over spilled milk that shouldn't be spilled. You win the Derby, you're trying to win the Preakness and have a shot at the Triple Crown. We, know all, we all know how difficult it is to try to win those three races in a short period of time. So he has an opportunity. He's going to be stacked up against some really nice horses. Bob Baffert, uh, allegedly, ac according to reports, he's going to try to run improbable back. I'm a little surprised because he's been on a very, very steady menu. He did get a month, um, four weeks before running in the Arkansas Derby, three weeks prior to the Derby, and there's only a two-week turnaround right now. But it's apparently uh, sur surfacing that Improbable is the best of his horses right now. He seems to be going well, at least that's at least the thinking uh, in the Baffert camp, uh, that he's the horse with, you know, in the end, who's got the talent and the ability to come back. I'm, I'm guessing game winner, maybe he takes a run at the Belmont. I think Roadster, it's safe to say after this, is off the Triple Crown Trail, as as would be the case with a number of other runners. But um, Country House will be an improbable, looks like an, uh, an entrant. Brad Cox has said that Owendale, the Lexington Stakes winner, and his uh, rivals that he defeated in there, Swaino, and another twist of fate who had already earned a Preakness berth uh, with his win in the El Camino Real Derby, are going to probably be likely candidates. Then you have Bourbon War, who was, of course, uh, fourth in the uh, Florida Derby, second in the Fountain of Youth, didn't have enough points to qualify for the Derby, as was the case with Kenny McPeak's Signal Man. Uh, so that makes it very, very interesting. There are some people already saying that Country House will be lucky to finish fourth and hit the board and hit the super, but we'll see. Maybe he has a chance uh, given his improved tactics, something that it you know does not seem to be uh, resonating with horses like Harvey Wallbanger and some of these other deep closers. Uh, one thing about Country House, a horse who I was high on after the Risen Star, maybe not so much going into the Arkansas Derby after fourth a fourth place finish in the Louisiana Derby, is that he has improved and he's starting to come around. And Flavian Pratt, as I've said before, did a very, very smart thing in getting him into the race, knowing that it would favor front runners. But that's the case with the Derby, even on a dry race track. So I think the track surface really doesn't factor into those adjusted and new, new and improved tactics so much as just being smart smart enough to know you've got to really get into a rhythm and put your horse into a position that maybe he's not familiar with but you know this is you know more than a grand experiment and he handled it very very well despite the fact um, despite the belief that I don't think he should have been moved up uh, via disqualification but he gets his opportunity to have the opportunity to have a shot at the triple crown of the Belmont Stakes uh, in the Preakness. There were two horses in the race that lost all chance to win a Kentucky Derby and they were in position at the time to hit the board. I, I know the stewards had a very, very difficult decision. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I wasn't in their shoes. I'm glad I didn't have to make the decision in front of over 100,000 people. You know, with that being said, I'm damn glad they put our number up. <laughs> <laughs>